of Grady County, Oklahoma. Of Grady County, Oklahoma. To the best of my ability. The best of my ability. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. All the duties pertaining to. All the duties pertaining to. Said office. Said office. And obey the constitution. And obey the constitution. And laws of the United States. And laws of the United States. And Oklahoma. And Oklahoma. All right. Welcome, welcome aboard, Christy, in one of the uh, <laughs> funnest times uh, you can be aboard. Probably. <laughs> Memorable Thanks. for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. We have item six, a swearing in of Rochelle Bowens as board clerk. I don't, Rick, do we have anything for that? Any language? I don't. My understanding is that we did, but. Um, we need to come, we need to look, we need to look at that and come back to it. Yep. Michelle, do we, you have that language? No, I don't. Okay. We can come back to six and seven in a little bit. All right. All right. We'll keep going. That's too long. All right, let's go to item eight, reorganization in the Board of Education. So annually, it's the bylaws for, or in our policy for the Chickasha School District, um, that annually we elect the president and first vice and second vice president. There is no state law requirement. Each board is open to set a policy and determine how they'd like that president and those officers to rotate or be selected or whatever, this is the policy of this district. So we're that time of year, we do that same time we swear in uh, new board members. So nominate up some folks. I nominate Zach McGill stay as president. Second, Alan. Any other nominations? <laughs> I move that nomination cease. Second, Alan. <laughs> okay. Call roll, please. Um, sorry, I'm working on. I'm working on two things. <laughs> oh, <you're laughs> trying, to, <laughs> trying to keep up. <laughs> okay. Um, Alan. Yes. Cliff. Yes. Gertis. Yes. Morris. Yes. Miguel, should I call you too? Or do you, you didn't, but I'll abstain. I'm not going to vote for myself. That seems a little presumptuous. <laughs> All right. Well, I would, we need the, uh, go ahead and select first and second. I move that we, and I nominate uh, Robin Morris for first vice president. Second, Alan. Who is currently second vice president? Second. Laurie. Laurie. Okay. I'm second I also, vice president. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know who was. So. Can we nominate those together, Zach? Yes, I'll yeah. nominate. I'll check, think, adjust my nomination to include Laurie as second vice president. Okay. So I'll second that since Laurie's second and before it's herself. I'll second that. Okay. Any other discussion or nominations? I move nomination cease. Second. Okay, call roll please, Rochelle. Alan. Do, Alan. We, do we vote if we're in the nomination? Yeah, I think so, since this one's got both in it, just go ahead. Yeah, you'll okay. have to yeah. Alan, yes. Cliff. Yes. Curtis. Yes. McGill. Yes. Morris. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right, Robin. Okay. Let's go to item nine recognition of our quarterly support employee. Miss Jennifer.
She's muted. <laughs> Jennifer, we can't hear you. There, can you hear there me? There you go. Now we can. So Jody Pratt, and she is uh, one of our child nutrition staff. She's getting the employee support employee of the quarter this year. Um, she's always very helpful, even throughout the year, but also was helpful during the COVID and doing preparing all the meals and everything for when we served um, in March and throughout that time. So um, that's the reason why we're kind of recognizing Jody and I mean I, I just am so proud of all of our child nutrition staff and the work that they've done. Absolutely. Thanks to thanks to Jody and as you said, Jennifer, to the, the whole team that I was really happy and proud of the way that Chickasha through everything and with COVID and everything going on, had to shut school early, being able to provide lunches for all the kids and the families that we did. It was awesome. So I appreciate everybody that took part in that and helped do that. Yeah, they came in spring break, got everything organized and ready to go, and we didn't miss a beat. Awesome. Awesome. It is. All right. Do we want to, are we ready to circle back to six and seven, or we need some more time still to get the the language, swearing language? I've been uh, texting with both ladies. Let's come back to that a little bit later. We have the oath. We're just making sure we have all the right wording for it, but we do have it. Tim, four. Just let us know, Rick, when you're ready, and we'll circle back. All right. Well, let's go ahead. I need to chime in real quick on the language for that. When you swore in Christy, the speech that Rochelle was giving triggered a copyright violation on YouTube, and it stopped the stream. So I, I don't know <laughs> That's if why we're going to have to. text. Everybody keeps texting me yeah. saying it went it's, off, it went off. Yeah, we went off. Yes, I, I have, I've got it back up and running again, but I'm worried that if you go to swear in the next person, the, the speech and stuff will, will violate and stop the stream again. Okay, yeah. so why don't we do that towards the very end of the meeting? And that yeah. way we can just get through everything and right before we adjourn, we'll swear those two in. Okay, well, there is a, there's the five board members and then also the super. There's also a whole supporting cast of staff here that witnessed that. So just our public, we appreciate you guys tuning in and watching and participating with the board meetings. We know the virtual is, is different and it's weird in some ways and good in some ways, but not the same as being there in person. So uh, we did follow everything correctly. We have multiple people that can attest to that. So as, as our admin person over the YouTube, Eric stated, um, the, just that language caught the filter on YouTube and shut us down for copyright infringement. Um, so that may happen again as we uh, swear in and, and take oath for Kelly and uh, Rochelle later in the meeting. So if that happens again, that is probably what it is. We will make sure that we follow everything correctly and we have multiple people to test to that. All right. And the Zoom cloud recorded version will have everything in it if for some reason it is needed in the future. Perfect. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you, Eric. All right. Number 10, Rick, return to learning presentation. All right. Get get after it. All right. Well, this is the uh, probably the reason why a lot of people are tuning in tonight is to hear our return to learning. Absolutely. And um, so without further ado, I'm going to start screen sharing here and we will get into the plan. All right, so um, first thing I'd like to do is share the parent survey results um, that we've had as of right before the meeting. We're sitting at right at about 730 total responses uh, from parents across the district. Um, we are finding that the responses are equally represented to all grades pre-K to 12. The three biggest concerns that have been identified by our parents is social distancing will be difficult, uh, possible exposures to COVID-19, and then schools may close with little notice. We also want to break down um, just three of the areas that we ask for direct feedback, just yes, no questions, basically. So for face masks, should face masks be required for staff members? Uh, as of today, 57% of our parents have said no. 
43% have said yes. And we've had 706 people respond uh, specifically to that question. Should face masks be required for students? 55% have said no, 45% have said yes. We had 696 responses um, to that particular question. So as you can tell there in face masks, we are pretty much evenly split, uh, almost 50-50 on both of those with it leaning a little bit more towards no on each one of those. What learning pathway would you choose? If you, uh, would you be interested in 100% virtual distance learning pathway for your child? 45% have said no. 32% said yes, with 23% being unsure out of 719 responses. When we asked about blended learning, 46% said no, 32% said yes, 22% were unsure. We've had fewer responses on this one, 374. And then finally, transportation. If we cannot ensure social distancing on district provided transportation, would you transport your own child? And 73% of our parents have said, yes, I will transport my own child. 27% uh, said, no, my child will still ride a bus. And that's out of 713 responses. So we have had multiple um, meetings and conversations. Uh, we've been looking at feedback uh, from the surveys and everything. And so without further ado, here is the plan. Uh, this next school year, we will be providing three learning pathways uh, for parents to choose for what, uh, how they want their child to go to school. The first one is the traditional. Every student in the district will be automatically enrolled in a, a traditional uh, pathway, which is, is on campus five days a week, uh, normal schedules. Um, it will include virtual days, so we will have built-in days. Students will be, still be at school, but we'll be working with them uh, to prepare them for any remote learning day. And that would be a time when we are out of school due to a shutdown because of COVID-19, uh, inclement weather, maybe a snow day or a severe weather day that uh, has been forecasted. Uh, we would just be able to switch over to remote learning days. Um, it will be, a, uh, we'll use Google Classroom and Meet on those virtual learning days and for the remote learning days. Uh, Acellus will be uh, our learning platform for grades pre-K to sixth and Admentum for grades seventh through twelfth. Uh, and this will be supported by CPS teachers and staff. We have a blended option, which is for secondary students only in grades seven through 12th. It is online instruction by Edmonton with at least, at least one class at school each day. Uh, this would allow students that are gonna do virtual but still wanna be able to participate in band, music, athletics, et cetera. This would be the option for them to be able to do that. Uh, this will also be supported by our staff. Transportation would be offered only during our normal AM and PM routes. Uh, if there's a uh, time during the day that a student would come to school for anything else, uh, parents or that student would have to provide transportation. It does require a semester commitment. Um, so once you enroll in this and after, we're going to give you a seven-day grace period to try it out. And if during those seven days you decide that this is what I want to do, then you will be locked into this option for the first or second semester of the school year. Uh, you do need to complete an application and that application will be available online and at enrollment starting tomorrow. Um, and you can also pick up copies at the administration building. Breakfast and lunch will be made available to each student that's in this option every day. Finally is the virtual. This is 100% complete online learning. Uh, Acellus will be pre-K through sixth grade and Mentum seventh through 12th grade. Um, it does not require any classes at school. You do not have to go up to the schools really for any instruction, any extracurricular, all that. You will simply be doing everything virtually. It will be monitored by CPS teachers. Students will report through the Quality Academy, and this is just allowing us to have a, a way to minister, keep things on track uh, for all of our virtual students. It does require a semester commitment, but once again, you'll have that seven-day grace period. If you enroll in this and decide it's not for you, you have until the seventh day of school to switch over to traditional or blended. There's an application process and breakfast and lunch will be again provided to students. Uh, for Chickasha Public Schools and regarding social distancing, we will work to ensure social distancing is practiced when feasible and our sites will be developing protocols and guidelines. Larger learning spaces will be utilized for classes with larger enrollments. Um, and additionally, in classrooms, we're going to be looked to removing any extra furniture items in there so we can spread dust out as much as possible. Each site will develop procedures to help ensure social distancing for breakfast and lunch times and recess were applicable. 
Um, we want to make sure that our kids are spread out as much as possible, that we're utilizing uh, the right protocols to feed our kids and to meet their needs each and every single day. We will also utilize signage, posters, announcements, et cetera, as reminders throughout the day um, about social distancing and the importance of doing so. Temperature checks. This is where we are wanting to partner with all parents. Temperatures should be checked at home by parents before each child leaves for school. No one should come to school uh, with a fever over 100 degrees. Uh, visitors will be required to have their temperature taken and answer health screening questions upon coming to the buildings. Anyone with a temperature of over 100 degrees will be removed from school and placed in a quarantine room that will be monitored by staff until they can safely leave the school premises. And that would be for students and for staff members um, that might happen during a school day. One of the biggest conversations is face mask and coverings. And there's been a lot of uh, conversation about this. And as you can tell from the survey results, we're split uh, pretty much 50-50. The CDC and the State Department of Education recommends the use of face mask and or coverings when feasible. Both of those come from their guidance that they've issued. At this time, additional protocols are being considered by multiple state agencies. This does include the State Department of Education, the State Department of Health, and some others. We will follow any and all required mandates and will announce our protocols as information becomes available either before the start of the school year or once they um, give out their uh, protocols. So at this time we are holding on what we're actually going to be saying about face mask. Uh, it does no good to say something today and then it's changed in a week or two um, through any other pro additional protocols that are given to us. Mask will be made available for any student that becomes ill at school or is unable to purchase one and their parents want them to have one, we will have masks that students will be able to get. There may be areas of the school uh, or designated classrooms where face masks will be required depending on the needs of staff members or students or when social distancing is not feasible. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're uh, working to meet everyone's need and providing a safe environment and so there will be those areas where they will be required to be in a classroom or be in a certain uh, area of the building. Sanitizing and cleaning, we will have hand sanitizer available um, all throughout the building in every classroom each day. Frequent washing of hands and good hygiene will be practiced and taught uh, in classrooms, desks, tables, chairs, keyboards, high touch areas, etc. will be sprayed and wiped down with disinfectant after each class period or towards the end of that period for secondary, and then periodically throughout the day in our elementary classrooms. All schools will be completely sanitized each week. Um, and this will be done by our operations department and our team that will be having doing that. Transportation, we will implement and follow any required protocols related to face masks on buses. Students will be assigned areas on buses by bus stop location. So they've been together at the bus stop location. We'll pick them up, have them all sit together in the same uh, area of the bus. Buses will be clean and sanitized at the end of morning and afternoon routes. Social distancing will be encouraged as much as possible on buses and parents are encouraged to bring their children to school if feasible by providing their own transportation. In the event that we have a COVID-19 exposure, according to the CDC guidance for schools to reopen, we are to immediately notify health officials and we could likely dismiss students and most staff for two to five days, depending upon the exposure. This initial short-term dismissal allows for health officials to assess the situation and for crews to sanitize the exposed areas. From the Oklahoma State Department of Education, they have a guideline that currently states a 14-day quarantine for any exposure to someone with a confirmed COVID-19 diagnosis. So any student or staff showing symptoms will be moved to a quarantine room. We will contact parents in the event of an exposure we will first start with those students that are involved in the exposure and then we will be notifying other parents in the building as well. The closing of school will be determined by the district after receiving input from health and state officials. So I just wanna stress that in the event that there is an exposure um, of any staff or students, we are going to work with health officials uh, throughout the entire process on exactly who needs to be uh, removed from the building for what length of time. We'll be making sure that we follow all of their protocols that they give us but you really have to handle each one of these situations on a case by case basis. I can tell you from personal experience and working with doctors and health officials, it is going to vary. And so we're going to listen to them. We're going to work with them and uh, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that we have a safe environment, but also a healthy environment for our staff members and students. Um, we would like to say that students that are on an IEP or 504 plan, uh, their parents need to request a meeting to discuss services if selecting 
the blended or virtual pathway. We wanna make sure that we're meeting all their needs um, as we uh, go through this next school year. And so definitely a meeting should be set up and scheduled. Remote learning days will be used when school is closed due to COVID-19 exposures, inclement weather, or any other unforeseen circumstance. Uh, these are for the traditional pathway as blended and virtual will already be uh, doing virtual learning. Uh, this allows for construction to continue by moving to a virtual format using Google Classroom and Google Meet. We are also partnering with Red Rock uh, Behavioral Counseling Services to provide um, services to address social emotional needs during this next school year, and that is on the agenda tonight. And all athletics and activities will continue as planned, but with extra measures and protocols to ensure the safety of students and staff members. So we will constantly be working with OSSAA and every other governing body to make sure that we are doing the right thing for our kids as the protocols are given to us. Finally, I wanna let everyone know that copies of the complete return to learn plan, this is just a short summary. Uh, copies of the complete plan will be, uh, and this presentation will be posted on the district and site websites uh, with printed copies available at the administration building beginning tomorrow. And so the plan has much more uh, specifics in it. It's about nine pages long. We encourage everyone to take a look at it and um, hopefully that will answer most, if not everyone's question as we um, start coming back to school. I cannot stress to everyone enough that this is a very fluid plan. Uh, this is going to change. Um, this is, unfortunately, this is probably going to change more often than we want to admit. But uh, I wanna thank everyone for all their input and um, thank for everyone for their cooperation. And uh, hopefully as we move forward, uh, we'll continue to work together and do the right thing for our kiddos as we work to have school. Yeah, I'd like to say thanks to Rick and the, the full team that worked on this. Um, these are trying and uncertain times to say the least. Um, this is this this whole thing that that our whole country or the world has dealt with this year has been is a real mixed bag when you talk to people. Um, people are all all over the spectrum on opinions and thoughts and and feelings and personal situations that differ. So I think it's easy to say that there are sections of the return to learn that all of us, all the five board members that we would all agree on and then sections we disagree on and, and there'd be plenty of splits in between. And I have not seen a country, a state, a county, an organization, a business, a group that has the perfect plan. No one, no one is able to come up with the perfect scenario for, for the way that this happens, the way that it fits everybody individually and, and coming up with a plan that has options for people, I think is, is great. And I think it's fairly evident from the survey and, and feelings of the board and a lot of our staff that we want to have traditional school if in any way possible. And I appreciate that this plan sets us up to start that way. And um, I, to have that, to have that option, I appreciate everybody's hard work and we're all going to work together and we're going to do what's right for kids. Um, that's what I love about Rick. He says that a lot. I know, I know the hearts of a lot of the rest of the team and what they do every day. And we're going to do what we need to do to take care of our kids and to make sure that they get a good education. And um, we're going to all get through this and continue to move forward. And we're going to work together, even through differences of opinion. And there's not going to be perfect things that's going to please everyone. So we're just going to all band together and keep going forward and, and keep getting kids in school. And if it doesn't fit and some kids need to be at home, then we're going to support those kids as well. And if there's a difference that they need both, then we're going to support that as well. And we're going to make sure that these kids learn and that they feel supported and that they feel safe. Thank you, Rick. You guys did an awesome job. I have a comment. I also want to thank everyone that put this together. I was able to attend the meeting with some of the staff who also went, and I feel it was um, we were, you know, it was very thorough. And I, I encourage and I urge everyone watching this meeting or rewatching it or from time to time revisit the detailed plan that is going to be posted on the district website. Get your pencil, get your highlighter. I think it will calm everyone down on a lot of these questions and they will be answered instead of maybe turning to thoughts of your own or coming up with your own opinions. Go to the very thought out, very detailed plan and then also be able to use the presentation that Rick just gave, put those two together 
And I promise you, there is not a stone that's been left unturned in trying to do the best for our kids with what we're dealing with today. And again, they both mentioned it can change. It's fluid. We all are here together as a team. And I want to thank the team that put this together and that we all come on board and do the best for our kids and for this district. And just unfortunately, this, this is going to be something that we're going to be you know, rocking along with all together, but that's what we have is each other and all together. So I encourage everyone to look at the plan, the detailed, every single word, every single number, and what is already outlined and try to look ahead to solve for the kids. So thank you. The, the other thing I've mentioned before we move on is I do appreciate, Rick, um, you being transparent with the survey results. Um, that's not, not every organization or district. I mean, that sometimes they'll survey. A lot of times they'll present a summary um, of the results and they don't give the straight up data without any kind of filtering because they don't, you know, you're afraid to, um, the other side sees how close it was and then they, you get a barrage of input saying, see everyone, almost everyone wants to do this and we should do it this way. And you were just completely, you know, you and the team in the district completely transparent with what the results were, put them right out there to what the questions were, how many responses we got, everybody's stuff in there. And I appreciate that transparency. And I think the, the community does as well. So thank you for that. I agree. All right. Item 11, discussion and vote to approve or not approve the addendum teacher job description for federal programs. Sam, anything to add? Okay, so this is an addendum to the teacher's contract for those who are going to be assigned to work with our Title I and our Title III students. Um, in the past, we've just called this a Title I teacher, but we are now going to incorporate our Title III, which is our English learners. And we will assign a staff member half day to each of our sites. And so you'll see those um, early, later in the exhibit A as far as personnel goes. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I did add um, a part highlighted in yellow that explains that again, their primary role is to teach and to work with students. This paperwork and the 5% is on top of just like a special ed teacher would get. And sometimes those are after hours and those are weekends and those are, that's why they get paid the extra 5%, but their primary role is going to be working with students. Anybody have any questions about that? Okay. Thank right. you. Enter entertain a motion. Thank you, Pam. Uh -huh. I move we approve the uh, addendum teacher job description for federal programs. A second, Alan. Okay. Team, any other questions or discussion before we move to vote? No. Okay. Call roll, please. You're muted, Mich you're muted, Rochelle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let me get better at this. Alan? <laughs> yes. Cliff? Yes. Gerdes? Gerdes? Yes, sorry. McGill? Yes. Morris? Yes. All right. Item 12, discussion of vote to approve or not approve addendum to the cheaper teacher job description for American Indian Education Teacher. Okay, hey, again, this is an addendum to a teacher job description. We had this position last year. Uh, this position is paid for with a grant from Title VI funds. Danya is our um, American Indian Ed teacher, but in review, we didn't have a job description to match that position. And so this is just to give us a clear guidance of that role uh, in the job description. Um, and she will work again with American Indian Ed students 
during the day, she will monitor, she will tutor, she will support students and helping them at the high school prepare for secondary, prepare for graduate graduation. Um, and then her additional responsibility will be Johnson O'Malley students who qualify for that and will support the paperwork with that job. Okay, thank you, Pam. Uh -huh. any, any questions, team? No. Okay, I entertain a motion. So moved. Second, McGill. All right. Another discussion, questions? I don't see any head shakes. Okay, call roll, please. Allen? Yes. Cliff? Yes. Curtis? Yes. McGill? Yes. Morris? Yes. All right, item 13, discussion and vote to approve or not approve the addendum teacher job description for federal programs graduation coach. Okay, so a month or two ago, we hired Milton <clears throat> Bowen to be our graduation coach, instructional coach at the high school. And we're very excited about that possibility. A lot of that had to do with our dropout rate, our students who were not completing high school. And through that part of discussion, we know that, that those tendencies start much earlier than high school. And so what we're going to be doing is assigning a teacher at the middle school and a teacher at Lincoln Elementary that will work one class period. They will be assigned to work with those at-risk students, those students with chronic absenteeism or discipline problems and, and trying to build those relationships to keep those kids in school earlier. Um, and this will be staff that we already have at each site that we will just assign one person then that that will be part of their responsibility is meeting with and working with the students. And this is just a job description addendum to support that position. Okay, thank you, Pam. Uh -huh. Okay. Anybody have any questions or any discussion needed here or not? Just motion a second. We'll keep rolling. I make a motion to approve the addendum to the teacher job description for the federal programs graduation coach. Second, Cliff. Okay. Go ahead and call roll, please, Rochelle. Allen? Yes. Lift? Yes. Gardens? Yes. McGill? Yes. McGill? I said yes, sorry. Right. And Morris? Yes. All right, item 14, discussion and vote to approve or not approve a new job description speaks language pathology assistant. Pam, still up, here you go again. <laughs> so while I'm on a roll, one more job description here. So this is a position that we've had for a number of years. Um, have speech language pathologists who are fully certified. And then there is a position called a speech language pathologist assistant. Try to say all that three times. And um, they assist our tasks and they can't do the testing and they are assisted in writing IEPs and monitoring students, but they do support those teachers, those speech pathologists um, with caseloads. Our caseloads are huge. And so by hiring two assistants, one for each of them, we're able to support the needs of our students. So this again is just cleaning up and having a job description. I took a job description from Lawton schools and from more schools and combined it together for this job description. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. I like, I like clean up formalization. I love cleaning all this up. I make a motion to approve <laughs> the job description for our speech language pathology assistants and thank you. Thank you. Second, Cliff. Okay. Any questions or discussion, anyone? 
Nope. All right. Coral, please. Alan? Yes. Cliff? Yes. Gertis? Yes. McGill? Yes. Morris? Yes. All right. Item 15, discussion and vote to approve or not approve closing of CMS accounts. Ms. Debbie? Uh, we just had multiple accounts at the middle school that have not been in use for several years, and we were going to close some of those and move some of the money into the picture vending, which that way it can be used for anything towards our students. Okay. I, d so I don't have, I can't pull up the list with me right now, so. Um, no, you're good. I think, I, I mean, I'm. For me, uh, I've reviewed that. Debbie, so you said on the, the picture account, so the description and purpose of that account's pretty general. I mean, basically meet student needs, classroom supplies, technology needs that are outside the normal general fund budget, yeah, uh, special it can, projects, things like that. It can be used for any rewards we get for the kids, for um, PPIS, uh, incentives. Um, it, as long as it's used for the kids, that that's the account that it goes into. Okay. Hey, Laurie, I have a question. One, one of them is going to a science account. So they're not all going to a vending account. Correct. Okay. Uh, Just wanted to make sure we stated that. Uh, yeah. One of, yeah. And Debbie, your name is on all of these. Are you directly overseeing all of them? They're the, they're just ones I know. Um, Joe and I went over them before I left for the summer and it's all the accounts that we discussed that have not been used. And so um, we just talked about which, which route it'd be best to move them for the kids um, for their use. Right, so you oversee these accounts though because no one else's name is on here. Correct. Okay. I guess I would like to ask about the robotics account. Um, I know that that money was set to robotics. And since we really are offering robotics in other areas, I was, my personal opinion, I would like to see that robotics account move to another robotics account since it was actually ear tagged for robotics. Now, if it had been, in the, if it had been money that middle school had raised, then yes, I think that should probably go back to the middle school. But yeah. since that was ear tagged for robotics, right. I personally would like to see that one moved into another robotics account, just like we're moving the science into another science account. Rick and That's I talked just my Rick, two cents. Okay, Rick and I talked about that, and it what that was originally was a science teacher when our when our core teachers were having to teach electives and we had no electives. Um, she taught a robotics class. And so the money that they raised, it was just called robotics. But Rick and I talked about that and we will move that to the robotics um, at the end of at the end of this last school year before I left, we did donate about $6,000 worth of material to Brandon Willis. He came and got it from the middle school. Perfect. So we'll be moving this account this amount of money over to um, Brandon's program, but we will also, um, we'll find a way to make sure that we can help Debbie out with the plan she wants to do to benefit kids there over at the middle school. So we wanna make sure this money goes to where it needs to go, but we're still gonna take care of the kids at the middle school. We'll figure that out. Nobody's gonna go without on this. Absolutely. So was there something particular in mind she had planned with all this money that we're messing up? <laughs> we do you wanna talk about that? Well, we're in phase two of our OK Transform grant, which is the PBIS incentive plan. And so this year we're going to have to come up with incentives for kids who are, you know, meeting certain requirements behavior wise. And um, so that that's where the money was going to go. Um, but we'll we'll figure out a way to do that. It's still going to well, happen. Well, if, if, I mean, it's it's your money. If you think it's a better use there, I'm sure not against it. That that that's up for you. That's really up for you guys to decide. Um, we're we're oh. just trying to make sure it gets back to the kids one way or the other. Sure, sure. 
I say since it was raised for robotics, even though it was a different robotics program, let's keep everything very clean. We'll put it in robotics and I promise you, we will take care of the kids at the middle school. This is a, an amount of $503.60. And yes, we, we will take care of the kids at the middle school for Debbie's program that she's trying to do for them. It's a, it's a fantastic program. We don't want to do anything that's going to mess that up. Agree. So we will find a way to make sure that that happens and more for the kids there. But we want to keep yep. everything very clear, very just the lines very straight. So robotics should go to robotics, science to science. And uh, but no, nothing is going to be missed out at the middle school. We'll, we'll take we care. We need a fundraiser. We'll, we'll take care of it for them. There yes. <laughs> okay. Any other questions or discussion on 15? No. It shakes no. Thank you for clarifying all that. You're yes. welcome. Motion, please. Tell me, so, Alan. Okay. <laughs> so we had Alan. Who was the second? Cliff, second. Okay. All right. Rochelle, go ahead and call roll, please. Alan? Yes. Cliff? Yes. Gertis? Yes. McGill? Yes. Morris? Yes. All right. Takes us to item 16, discussion vote to approve or not approve care coordination agreement, OMHC, being as Red Rock Behavioral Health Science Services and Chickasha Public School District. Pam, you're up again already. <laughs> you're muted, Pam. <laughs> You're muted, Pam. Okay, go. sorry, I got kicked off. I totally lost everything on my screen and I was trying to text Rick to say, help, I'm kicked off. Okay, so this agreement, we've had this in the past and with everything that's happened with COVID and our students have been at home, our staff has been at home, we know that everybody has been put through some emotional undue stress. We don't know what it's going to look like exactly when we return, what our students, what our, our, our staff have been through. And so we reached out to Red Rock to say, hey, let's talk about some options. How can we partner again? And so they came and met with the administrative team and we're going to set up additional meetings with them and our counselors and our principals to find some supports for our students and for our staff. It can be, they're gonna help us with developing a crisis team. Um, they can help with some small group uh, counseling or small group sessions. They can help with systems of care or wraparound services for families. Um, they could even possibly help us with an employee assistance program if our employees were needing somebody to reach out to. So we're just starting this agreement back up and exploring the possibilities and the opportunities. But above all, we just wanna make sure that we have some avenues, some support, some resources, some connections to help support our students and staff so, as we return to school. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I yeah. agree. Much needed. I, I think, I mean, they they were very receptive when they came and met with us. Rick was there. Rick, I don't know if you have anything else you want to add on that. I just think this is a fantastic opportunity. Uh, this just simply gets us into an agreement to where we can explore future services and possibilities. Um, there's a lot of things going on and a lot of people are really struggling right now, as we all well know. And uh, as school starts, we want to be able to meet the needs, uh, not only academically, but we want to address those social and emotional needs. Um, it's about educating the whole child. It's about supporting staff members. It's about working with parents and partnerships. And so we feel this is just as vital as having a return to learn plan. Uh, we think this is very much an important part of that process. One thing I do want to stress is that um, I'm a very strong believer in parents knowing what's going on with their kids and parents giving permission for things to happen. So we're not going to implement or start any counseling services with any kid without parents knowing about it. Um, I'm very big on that. I, my wife and I have raised two boys and uh, I want to know 
what you know what's happening in school with my boys and um, we're going to do the same for each and every single kid so we're going to make sure we're talking to parents and letting them know uh, but we just really want to have these wraparound services to support people and really create the best experience possible for our kids and our staff is this something that we'll have notification of or um, somehow be able to make sure that the parents know that this is available to them too? Yes. So as we go into the school year, we have those meetings with principals and counselors and um, staff from Red Rock. Uh, yeah, we'll be making things available to them as things are planned and put together as we see the need. Awesome. Uh, one of the things I really want us to develop, um, I just feel we have a need for it, is an employee assistance program. Mm -hmm. um, they're, you know, they, we ask a lot of staff members and yes. it's a very stressful job in a lot of ways. And I think the stress is going to be increased this next year, just simply because of everything that's going on in the world. And um, so we just want to be there to support them uh, because when you can take care of those needs, um, then you can eventually get to the education, the academic side of things. But we're, we're never going to be able to get past that threshold if we're not making sure that things are okay internally. And so, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna develop these things and roll these things out as we see needs. I don't wanna, Pam and I do not wanna just throw things out there and it hits the wall and we see what sticks. We want it to be meaningful and purposeful uh, to really make an impact with people. Thank you. I make a motion to approve the uh, contract with Red Rock Behavioral Health Services. Second, Alan. I think it's awesome. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? All right. Co roll, please. Allen? Yes. Clift? Yes. Curtis? Yes. McGill? Yes. Morris? Yes. All right. Thanks, Pam. Item 17, discussion and vote to approve or not approve the Acellus Learning Systems quote. Seth? Yep, yeah, uh, I think I spent many, many hours late at night researching these things and we had many debates as a team. And uh, we feel that for this coming year, Acellus will give us the best support for pre-K through sixth graders with pre-K. Um, it, it's mostly some kindergarten readiness stuff. So we're gonna supplement that ac those academics with some um, things like Frog Street that the district has already purchased, Lexia, things like that. Um, there's also some things to note on here. Uh, the specials or electives classes are, um, are involved in this course catalog. So there's Spanish, music, art, physical education even that's built into this program. And then um, there's also a social emotional learning course content too that teachers can deploy for their students. What does the social emotional learning consist of? So um, with Acellus, they try to tie it in with um, the health and physical education, even though they're two separate. So the way that they try to structure it is there may be um, the health or the, the PE lesson that's an active like physical activity that they're engaging in or learning about the body or things like that. Um, and then for social emotional, it's more so like uh, coping strategies and, and things along that nature. It's really just tied in for the elementary grades even though Acellus goes through 12th grade. Um, and so, Pam and I talked a lot about this, that um, we really like that portion because we can, even though kids are at home, we can still have parents go through these social emotional lessons as well too and support them. Um, and, and the social emotional is more like an, an add-on. It's not a part of the core or the, the specials, but it was wrapped into the payment for it for free. Seth, is it more on those or those modules that are more academic based so the parents would go through it or does it have like anecdotes and stories to relate it to kids of different ages is or kind of how does that or have you um, had so tells you so with both of the with the elementary version and the secondary version that we you're voting on um, there's online and offline content so our goal with these two uh 
products were that say you had a teacher from day one that wants to start implementing this in the classroom so that when they go um if we had to do a school or a class closure that it would kind of be seamless for the kids uh, it is kind of module based but on the teacher side they can deploy those in any order that they want so the goal eventually would be for us to align um their course layout with what our curriculum maps will be when we get those in place. Right now, the company has mapped that out. Everything's aligned to OAS, but our goal would be to align that more so um, with what we want in Chickasha. That's the long-term plan for it. Um, but as far as, so I, I have a four-year-old that's going into pre-K. I stuck her on the kindergarten side of it just to see how the reading component would be because that, that was the version I was most concerned about is how are we teaching kids reading that don't know how to read yet? And it is very um, engaging based. So there's people reading on the screen and then it'll stop and engage the parent and the kid in in an activity or something like that. Acellus is pretty unique because um, it provides real-time feedback back to the teacher about why Acellus believes that they are missing certain components too. Not just what they missed, but why they missed it. I like the fact that it also comes with quite a bit of professional development in the contract built in. Yeah. Because buying it and saying use it isn't always productive. So it looks like there's going to be administrative training as well as three days of on-site teacher training. Correct. So the three days is, um, there's kind of some leniency on how we want to structure that within the district. Um, sure. I, I think Rick can attest I have grilled these companies about what they will provide for us because I think they need to serve what's unique for our community and not mm -hmm. what's unique for a community by Tulsa that's purchasing right. it as well too. And so um, we are going to implement a plan that we think is best, but that, so um, at the start of August, I'm going to meet with uh, two teachers per site and any principals that want to come to kind of gauge what they feel is appropriate with implementation as well. And even expectations of, yeah. of how they should deploy it if we were to go distance learning. Yeah. But the, the key is they, it's there. So yeah, I right. like that. One of the things I just want to make sure um, that's known is that we are not, um, just implementing online programs just for the sake of implementing them. Um, we have, as Seth said, these have been very much well-researched. Uh, we have um, plans to bring you uh, policies for the board to consider at our next meeting that will address attendance, that will address grading, uh, that will address student engagement and monitoring of student performance. Um, we are going to implement these programs with fidelity with professional development. Um, site and district administration will be following and monitoring them. We want to make sure that our students are getting a good education while they're, if they're in a classroom or if they're online. And so um, this is by no means a program that we're gonna roll out and cross our fingers and hope that it's successful. We're going to be very purposeful, very deliberate in this. Um, and so this will be a process you will hear more about at the next board meeting as we bring you policies for you to consider. Uh, and that will be before the start of the school year. And um, we'll be working with parents and making sure that we're doing the absolute best for kids. And so just real fast, going back to the return to learn uh, plan and the application, um, those parents that are wishing for their kids to do virtual or blended, uh, will be answering some questions to let us know, like, do they have access to a device? And we wanna help them out if they do not have access to a device. Uh, we're also gonna help them out if they uh, need um, connectivity to the internet. And so we're going to do everything we can to address needs, work with them, but have programs that are truly meeting kids' needs and implemented with fidelity. I cannot stress that enough. Um, principals will be reporting to us all throughout this school year about use of the programs, how kids are progressing. Um, we're going to make sure that this thing is the right stuff for our kids. So um, 
I just feel like I just need to say that and get that out there. Um, this is not a, uh, and I will not say any more, this is not a repeat from before. That's it. I have two things. One, I'm super excited about these and the, especially the next few things you're getting ready to address, Seth, because it shows that we are finally having curriculum and we are going to get aligned. So this should be good news. And I'm, I think I'm hearing like celebration in the background here from the entire town that we will finally have some things aligned and that there will be some true curriculum. Um, back to the um, on the Acellus that you just talked about, and it talks about all the specials and the, the additional things that are allowed, just because you brought up the social, I mean, and the, um, the social and the emotional learning, should that be something selected and they are not in classrooms? Is that something that gets on the radar with the teacher so she can then maybe know that there is an issue we're tapping into that resource and if it is something that is an issue does then that potentially um trigger something for red rock or are we just allowing the parent to take whatever this curriculum is kind of spoon feeding them so the social emotional would uh, the the course would really be more like how we utilize guidance counselors for like whole group in class not necessarily um, for like a therapy based thing. So a general, how our guidance counselors go into class and lead whole group lessons. Okay. Does that make sense? It, it does. Um, I'll just, I'll, I may come in and ask you some questions about yeah, it. That's fine. fine. I'm just trying to make sure that if we're providing these, you know, touch points that, because that is such a sensitive issue, is that something that that we are on the radar and looking into to make sure our kids are safe and served well if that is if something that they're you know logging into yeah and i'm just going to be totally honest with you glory and that that might be one of those things that we work through the process and development as we go sure um because both of these things, working with Red Rock and then bringing in a Cellus and these, it's kind of new in the sense that they're both coming in at the same time. Right. Everything that's happening right now. Um, but yes, it'd be great if we had systems in place that when we're seeing signs and cues and tips of this happening, or a parent just reaches out to us. Right. Um, then we could implement those things together. So that's the importance of team working together and making sure that everything we bring is one cohesive plan and right. how we're gonna support and serve. So there are many things that we can roll out and say these are our specifics right now, but there, this is fluid and ongoing. And to me, that's kind of the exciting part that as we get people back into buildings and we get everyone working um, together, we can then keep addressing needs as things evolve and things keep going. Um, and I don't know, I just find that exciting that we're gonna be able to actually serve kids again. And uh, I can't wait to get kids in class. No, I think it's great. And the more resources, the better. So I'm. I'm glad that we have some some layers here that we can work with depending on what the needs are and fill all the the different needs of how the kids and their comfort of how they need to best learn. Yeah. All right. Any other questions or discussion before we have a motion? I make a motion to approve the Acellus Learning Systems contract. Second, Alan. Anything else, anyone? No? All right. Call roll, please. Alan? Yes. Clift? Yes. Gertis? Yes. McGill? Yes. Morris? Yes. All right, item 18, discussion and vote to approve or not approve admintum courseware quote. Seth? All right, so when looking at secondary, um, we could have easily gone with one for pre-K through 12, but I really wanted to um, hone in on after Lincoln, us having a, a solid platform that really seems to suit secondary students in particular. Um, Admintum's a pretty large national company um, but they have support teams specifically in the state and by region within the state. 
and I was really impressed with uh, their customer service and their plans for implementation for PD. And so um, we really, when we looked at it as a team, we wanted to do something that could flow over from the Quality Academy, you know, alternative school into virtual school into um, maybe some novice teachers that are emergency certified that we really need to just, because of how this year is, get them off the ground and running with, with a template since those curriculum maps aren't fully in place. Um, and so I really was impressed with Edmentum. Um, the great thing is with going with two different companies is they have a year to show us what they can do for us. And then if we need to make changes after that, we can make changes after that. Um, but I was super impressed with them. And I'm going to assume, because you just said for PD, there's no PD listed in this, but it's part of the package. Yes, and I have that um, in email from the company as well, too. Their, their PD is um, not line itemed. They, they just do it since we went with, a, uh, with district licenses. Uh, since it was over, I think it was over 200 students, they do a district license. Uh, and so it, they just wrap it in there. There'll be implementation PD, but also uh, mid-year PD as well, too. Okay. Same type of stuff with this, set, with this system, Seth. I mean, the teacher's able to see when, where, what activities students are participating in, monitor progress, interact. Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely more of a secondary geared curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, they actually own their own online school as well too. And so um, they, they have the courses pretty well thought out. It's, I logged on myself, they made me a sandbox on the back end and we really, it was very user friendly just logging on, you, each student has a dial of how much of the course they've completed. Um, and as a parent, a parent can log on as well too and see the progress of their kid. Um, it's also offline content. So those teachers that maybe want to print off specific lessons to do whole group in the classroom, they could do that as well too. Okay, Seth, does it also support, since it is kind of secondary, um, support additional like module addition. So if the teacher wants to add, say it's a science class and he wants to add a lab module, does it support that type of activity as well? Or would that be something that need to be done outside the software? Yeah, it would be outside. Um, Cause these secondary ones are really, I'll be honest, they're designed to meet accreditation so that um, since we're dealing with credit units for secondary kids that transcript to potentially college or, or career tech, uh, what in that situation we would look at, which will be the next item, our professional development for using Google Classroom mm -hmm. and embedding whatever lab they want to do onto that platform. Cool. Okay. What about... Um... I talked to Rick about this a little bit and I guess parents can sort of thumb through it and see what's being taught. But also I, what about privacy concerns with the students and the students' privacy? What do can you- Can we ensure all that? What do you mean? Are, are, do you mean like students cheating on it or do you mean like their student information? Student information. So. Uh, Jennifer, you can chime in if you want on this. What typically happens with these third party vendors is that our um, student information is held on Wingage and then they script some HTML between the two systems that, that bridge them. So we should still have the security on our end. Um, now, so really all you would see is uh, for if you were Edmonton, the company, you'd see a kid's name and whatever courses they're taking. You wouldn't see like social security number, data like that. What about like their test results and stuff? Will they have that? You mean like, like state tests? Is or tests they take on Edmonton. Well, the they have that information? Well, the, the company would own, I mean, they own the content to those, um, 
to those tests and that's what translates into them saying whether it, it, the course is partially completed or completed which translates into them getting the train they're going to own that right right but it's no different than lexia what we use yeah. for that uh, i mean there's there's no difference in any other third party vendors that we they don't own they don't with. own that information and um, security wise these companies have their data systems high security where it, it's not going to get leaked out. I'm I'm sure their security is a, a lot higher than probably most things that we have at our district. So they don't they do not own the data, um, and part of but what they don't own the data. They just own the software that the students are completing. Right. That is correct. So will they be able to pull and utilize, like they'll see all our scores, they may not see names, so they won't have personal information, but will they, do Do they like pull, like they would know our district, they would know our license number. Do they pull and like either use that for their own usage to judge either success or failures or to then put that out in their own marketing materials? I mean, do, the only do marketing that I've come across with are um, districts that literally contract them for their full online or blended, like they are a third party management company for the district, if that makes okay. sense. So, so address the, what you brought up before, like cheating, absenteeism, and, and how is all that strictly controlled as far as the grade or or how many times are they able to take the test and how many times can they, you know, keep going after this one thing? How true are those grades? So that's all, that's all um, on the teacher inside. So and deploy it for randomization. They can deploy it to see if um, the, when you log in, you see a full class or, or however you want to view it, whether it's class or all the students rostered to you. Um, and you can see, similarities in the questions that people are missing or getting exactly right. Um, so if you look at it and if you're being active, you can definitely tell whether there's there's that going on. So we, we as a district in Lori and down to the teacher have control over number of allowances per module that they're allowed right. to retake it, timing, un unlock it for special cases like um and things like that and that's some of them i'm guessing what rick and seth will be bringing in policy how we want to handle grading number of times modules number of times tests i mean that's all all stuff that should be at the master admin level and then down there'll be some teacher ad level permissions and some of that other stuff that uh, i'm guessing they'll we could ask more detailed questions to be explained more once they've got that in place we will provide guidelines um, that will allow teachers to be able to come in and set up how they want to structure their classes virtually here. But the expectation is, is that everyone will follow board approved guidelines and policies. So we will be very clear on this is the grading practices. These are the attendance practices. This is in regard like our district policy that we would have for cheating uh, would be enforced here. Um, this will be very clear and very much as um, comparable to an in-classroom style setting um, with absolutely zero tolerance for any attendance, grade, any type of tampering with student records. Um, so if I'm understanding you and Zach and Seth correctly, there's certain levels of administrative liberties that are assessed. And so if there's any um, question of anything, then super principals, or you can go in and see behind the scenes or Seth behind the scenes exactly what's happened, who's gone in and what strokes have been made. Yes, correct. Always so, the back door to the program. Yeah. Now, the yeah. key here is that it's gonna be very transparent. So. Very transparent. Thank you. Student records are confidential for parents, but we're, yes. Sorry, that's why I have one more question like on the student records. So if this company, I, I'm just trying to process how all this works. So if this company, like take, take 
a student's test results and all that. So who does own that information? We do. So, so think Are of it sure? more. Think of it more as quizzes. Uh, like so, there's no difference in um, us purchasing a McGraw Hill textbook and curriculum associated with it, as opposed to this taking a well yeah but the, the kid will take a test and you can throw the piece of paper away does that make sense whereas this is right. all this is data and that's big right now so somebody yeah. owns that data so who so well, they cannot share we use sure the they data sell without it? our permission what they cannot share or use the data from this district without our permission okay do we know that for sure though because i know that this has happened with other companies in the past not necessarily even just with chickasha i just know yeah, it's, anytime it comes wondering. to student data because of the confidentiality of it, it can only be used if we as a district agree, even on anonymous terms, for them to be able to utilize that data. Okay, and that's in the so, contract. Um, I've been going through everything, and I, I do not see anything that says that they will use it on their own accord or simply because we have a contract, they have the rights to do whatever. I don't see that in there anyway. Okay. So student data is, is confidential. They own, as Seth said earlier, they own the product they do not own the individual student results. And so we would have to be willing to say, yes, this could be used for research purposes, reporting purposes or whatever. Um, I do not see us doing that at this time. Right. Um, unless there was just some grandiose research that was being done and they could assure beyond, beyond, beyond how it would remain anonymous. Um, but no, our student results will remain ours. Now they will always have a backup record in the event they're required to in the event that it's lost for some reason. Uh, federal law re requires you that if you have a finalized grade or grade book of a student in a class, that must be maintained for at least a period of five years. Um, that's just in the event something happens, records are lost, right? whatever happens. Those students or parents can be able to go back and get those educational records. And, accept yeah. and I can tell you from my experience as, as just working with these companies um, in previous districts, not these in particular, pretty industry specific that the, um, the third party vendor uses a student ID, but they don't have a name associated with that student ID. So even like when the company screen shares with me and shows me what the back end is, you see just a number on their end with whatever the data points are for the the courses, but on my end, that number is linked to a name. So they could have a test completion for a 1002, but they have no idea the demographic of that kid because we set up on our end, like we would roster the student and things like that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. To them, they're a number, to us, it's a student. Yeah, and then also the official, grades are not being kept within admin, admitum or a cellist or anything else. It's module completion percent correct on that quiz on that module, not the actual grade for the course that's outside of that with a system we've used before or however we normally keep our grades. So yeah, these are not our grade books. Right. I make a motion we approve the admintum contract. Second, Clift. All right, before we go to vote, any other questions, discussion? Okay, Rochelle, call roll, please. Allen? Yes. Clift? Yes. Gertis? Yes. McGill? Yes. Morris? Yes. All right. Item 19, discussion to approve or not approve the mobile mind quote. Seth? All right, I'm going to geek out for a second on this <laughs> because this is my type of professional development with the attention span of like two or three minutes. Um, this whole uh, mobile mind is a Google Chrome extension. So it's just downloaded on either a personal or a company laptop. They sign in with our district Google credentials. And um, it in real time produces professional development and learning pathways. So uh, what I mean by that is at the beginning of the year, after we work with that committee, 
teachers will work through um, like there's one <laughs> way that's already been developed. It's distance learning 101. And then we'll go into more courses that are geared specifically to any of the Google apps, whether it's classroom, docs, forms, YouTube, those type of things to support their distance learning. Um, it is actually graded and gives them tips on how to improve it in real time as an extension when they're working in, in it. Um, the cool part about this is since they're only one of 12 Google um, partners in the country for, for this kind of professional development, that with the license they've given us, every teacher in our district, if they chose to go through the path, could be Google level one or two certified for free without having to pay for the test. And um, that's pretty cool stuff because teachers can also um, be certified Google professional development people as well too. So my, my strategic plan with this would be to have some power users um, go above and beyond what we're requiring. And then eventually we have some of those kind of early adopter trainers that are in the district that can be site-based people to help really with frontline support or call them whenever we're on remote learning and things like that. Um, I'd really encourage you to, to look at some of those videos that I linked on the item for consideration. It's pretty cool stuff. Okay. The way of the future. <laughs> way of the present, Robin. We're here now. Tomorrow's the future. <laughs> Not what we used to have to do, but it's what we have to provide. This is That's what right. our kids need. That's right. Well, this is this the main purpose of here too is PD, right? This professional development is for staff. Yep. Yep. Ab absolutely. Yep. Sweet. We're okay. we're finding all kinds of ways for PD, and a lot of the stuff that we're just even rolling out for just this agenda. So this is awesome. Yeah, the beautiful thing about this is we're not getting, even if we could physically all be present, we're not paying five grand for a speaker to do one talk or two talks throughout the district on one day. I mean, this is an ongoing embedded PD that uh, we as a team can say, this site needs more training for how to record and do screen sharing for their YouTube channel so that kids are still getting direct instruction, things like that. This meets all the requirements and everything for what they need individually. Uh, so all of it right now is course developed, like the company has developed it. And then they um, it's built in that we once it's approved, we can also create ongoing modules with them, too. So, I mean, for instance, if if we wanted to do even something on the operation side, like how to pick up a box safely. They will even work with us to have our employees go through a module like that. All right. Very adaptable, thank you. Mm -hmm. yep. I like it. Well, it, and it also helps to even the playing field. So everybody gets the ability to understand how to do these things and not just the ones who are young and already know it. it and so I'll I've, also, I'll add on that, Robin, thanks for bringing that up. Every uh, learning pathway is also, you get to rank whether you are a one star, two star, or three star with your current technology level. And so it kind of like tears you back or tears you forward based off of your skill set that you already have. Nice. Yeah. That's For cool. those of us who are a one, we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say there's several people on a team and throughout the district that is excited that I will probably do this. <laughs> <laughs> Notice I didn't say whatever that, we can do. It's a problem. All right. Any other uh, team? You have any other questions? Discussion? Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'll motion. make the motion. Okay. Second, Cliff. Is that Morris? That was first. Yeah, yes. Morris. Morris and Cliff. 
All right, go ahead, Rochelle. Alan? Yes. Cliff? Yes. Curtis? Yes. McGill? Yes. Morris? Yes. All right, item 20, discussion about to approve or not approve a softball concession stand. Jerry Don? Yeah, so we had a family um, offered to donate a new concession stand. I think you guys have a picture. It's a uh, metal container that mm -hmm. uh, is is easily able, uh, you're easily able to transport it and move it if you wanted to. And uh, it's a lot more sturdy and, and permanent than what we currently have. We have a, uh, a trailer that we borrow that we move in and out each season. I have a question. Kind of you say it can be, it's, it's, wait a minute. I think I understood you said it's more permanent, but yet can be moved in and out. Sure. So it doesn't have wheels on it. I mean, it's a, it's a solid. Um, is it a pod? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> is, you just, literally, I mean, I see a board under it. Like you literally just set it down and it's all level and safe. Yeah, so basically, I think what they're going to do is just um, uh, get it with a front end loader and and slide it in there and set it on some level ground. Okay. But yeah, it's it's not going anywhere. It's pretty heavy. So if it's donated, that's awesome, and and thank you to to the company. That's fine. But if it's donated, then again, that's permanent. We keep it. It's not just going to be then Correct. leaving again. Who right. if something we're responsible for all maintenance and upkeep and everything like normal yes ma'am okay and it looks like it's black does it stay black uh i'm sure we can do whatever we want to with it i just want to make sure if there's something that ends up on it it's chickasha only and it's i'm sorry you broke up I just want to make sure if something's on it that it's like our logo or Chickasha only and maybe doesn't right. become someone's advertising piece in the name of, you know, a, a donation. And I'm not insinuating that it would, but at any given time, is it going to remain property of and controlled by Chickasha schools that can be our logo? Yeah, from what I understand that it's a 100% donation, a gift to the softball program. Okay. Do they, and there's a trailer now. What about the big one that's used between soccer and softball? Um, soccer has its own concession stand. Right. Softball has uh, just a trailer that we, we borrow from my understanding. Okay. What about, didn't they buy a cooler or did, did they not? I may be confused on that. At one point there was a, a big cooler or something that was purchased. Uh, I'm not aware of it. We may have one. I, I'm just not sure. Sorry. No, that's okay. It just, to me, it looks, I don't, I mean, I know I've seen the trailer and I've been to the games and I just want to make sure that this is not like an oven and, and, and super hot or like if they plug it in, is that so what the are same? the logistics? Like, do they just, isn't there, is there like an outlet that they just plug it into right there? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's what we did with our trailer was just run um, power to the trailer from the stadium. There's an outlet there. So it the was, power up. And it's not, so there's enough electricity that, because I'm just thinking about what all is going to be plugged in there. I'm yeah. just kind of wondering about the logistics of it. Sure. Yeah. I, think, I think it would be better than what we currently have. Um, and, and it's something that we can make improvements to. Um, will we have power in it besides running the extension cords? I don't know. And it looks like this can be locked up and yeah. secured. Yep. Yeah, it's looks like it's been retrofitted with like the serving counter and the door and everything's still there and sturdy steel on the outer part can be lowered and locked up. Yep. I think it's a great idea, but yeah, you'll still have to make a mile hike to the restroom. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's it's could not work, that bad. Could you work on that restroom donation next? <laughs> <laughs> when you have to walk to the practice football field every day from the field house, then then you have a gripe. 
Yeah, you are you are correct. That is a little further. I, I give you that. There's some there's like that lowland area in those woods are not very far away. So <laughs> is that legal? No comment. No comment. So Jerry Dillon, when will this be delivered? Um and like when do you expect to roll it out? Uh my guess is it's it's ready to deliver we're just waiting for approval um practice actually starts for softball on wednesday so uh okay. it's it's it, it's that time we're getting there okay yeah, happens fast yeah it does okay i just i want i i think it if if we're gonna have this it's so awesome i'd like to see it emblazoned with purple and Chickasha logo um instead of what kind of just looks like a, a black box that got left behind and like yeah we if, can we can do that i mean yeah. let's trick, let's trick it out you want to paint it white and put some so it's bright not as hot put some big uh led it, well, LED I mean, on it, it would sure help changing the color <laughs> because it would have been an oven and i don't see a air conditioning unit going in so I'm not, I'm just saying they may, you might they may already be outfitted with that or already have the cutout, but that's definitely something the maintenance team could do is put a window unit cut out if we needed to, but. But you also have to understand there's a lot of variables here. This could be powder coated. And if it's powder coated, you're not going to paint over it. Right. No. So. Uh, I'm thankful Jerry for the donation. That part. I make a motion. We yeah. accept the concession stand. I second. second Alan. Mm -hmm. Rochelle? Okay. Allen? Yes. Clift? Yes. Gertis? Yes. McGill? Yes. Morris? Yes. And all I'm right. assuming someone will send a thank you note and all that needs to be done to the company that donated it. You bet. Yeah. And We're very I'd like to add, I, I, I love it. We're very thankful. But I just, again, I ask a lot of questions because if we don't, we're going to get 300 questions. Why didn't we ask any questions? Yeah, I was going to say something similar. Thanks, Laura. Yeah, we're very appreciative. Thank you to the family. Last very. Donated it. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Item 21, consent agenda. It's pretty, pretty short. Um, <laughs> so to explain to everyone that might be looking at the board agenda, um, we are gonna pull a couple of items uh, from the consent agenda tonight that we'll bring back to you on the August 10th board meeting. Um, the first one I wanna to pull tonight is the item number, or number O, uh, pardon me, where'd it go? The one with the facility usage agreement between us and the Arts Council. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Yeah. I want to pull that one. Uh, we're going to update some language. I've been talking to Susan Gerhart. We've been emailing today. We're just going to update some language in that. We'll bring it back to you on August the 10th. Okay. Um, you should have new language or uh, it's the same contract. We just added language to it today and talking to the Washita Valley Community Action Council uh, for items N and O. There is a, uh, it just had nine items in there. Uh, now it has a 10th item that states that they will have liability insurance for their programs uh, there on our uh, properties. So will we get new documentation or we'll just approve this with that addition? Approve it with that addition. It. We posted it on the website and we can okay. send that to you, but it's just number 10 saying that they have liability insurance. Okay, so we're not pulling that. No, we're not going to pull it. Okay. We're just going to move forward with that part. And then we are going to pull everything uh, P- all the way through item AT. We're gonna table those. We'll bring them back to you next month on August the 10th. These are all the sanctioning packets. Uh, we're gonna adjust this process a little bit. I think it'll be a little bit more streamlined for all of you and for everyone that goes through all this. And um, so we'll have those back to you in a couple of weeks. Okay, Rick, just a small clarification there. Do you want to table and then because you said table and list August, but if you think there's any chance all of those aren't completely ready by then, if there's any back and forth, we should just pull them and then you bring them back when they're ready. 
Well, we're, we can pull them, um, but we're going to bring them back to you August 10th simply because we need to get them to you and approved so they can start fundraisers and all that for the school year. So, uh, so they'll, just we'll, we'll, back. Huh? they'll just need to have them back. That's right. So we can say we're going to pull them, but we will have them back to you August 10th. Okay. So that leaves for you items A through O, with the exception of K. Okay. All right. I had, um, and I think I know Rochelle's already made that update, but just so anyone that hasn't seen it knows, the A and B both reflect now June, not the month of July. That was just a typo. We got that. And then there was a clarification on the July 16th special minutes for item nine. The word services was added to the end. It, it was stated as um, revision or review and revisions. And someone could misinterpret that as we approved pre-approved revisions, but we didn't. That was just for the services to do those things and then bring it back to us. So uh, Rochelle clarified that as well. And the minutes reflect that. All right. I have asked my questions of the team members where I had them on here. So I'll open it up. You guys, if you have anything for what is left on the consent agenda, go ahead and fire away so we can get through this. I've asked all of mine. I'm good. I'm I went good. Through, um, hold on. I went through every single one of mine, but um, I did it. Nope. I already did it. All right. All the post-it notes are taken care of, Lori. And tabs. <laughs> now they are. Okay. <laughs> I did just notice one thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> and we can talk about it. Like we can talk about it later if you want. Just no. I don't have access to it now. But Rick, I just noticed is the Renaissance, is that on the consent agenda? Do I have that right? Yes, the, it's I, it's I, Kara, annual renewal of the Renaissance assessment. Okay, because I just, I I just, saw, I. I just saw on That's there it. where it says by signing below, these are the things we agree to. And the third one, it says consent to the collection, use, and disclosure of the personal information of children under the age of 13, as discussed in the U.S. privacy notice located at, and there's links. Do you know what those say? I'm just, I just noticed that and we've kind of been, we can talk about it later if you want, like I'll vote to can, to agree to this, but I, I just. What clarification kind of, on what, what they're meaning what, there or what? Maybe we can. Is any other team member, I, I have not worked with Renaissance that closely over the past Re few years. Renaissance so. is, is that not the same one that's star that does our star stuff or am i thinking of something different pam it is so we've had star for it is star a lot of years and star is one of um the reading sufficiency acts the alternative assessment accepted by the state so if a kid fails the third grade reading test those can be used as alternate scores to pass them as well in committee okay and I think, Seth, didn't we talk about we're only going to use the star through grade four because of reading sufficiency? And no, so we, we are. We, we extended that. the no. reading till eighth. We just cut the high the high school ones that we had. OK. Um, yeah, I had that in front of me. We I think we saved around 12,000 doing that. Really, I just want to make sure as we're moving forward with this online stuff that we can answer people's questions about the data data is huge right now and i i don't i don't know that a lot of people understand that but i just want to make sure that privacy and their data we know where it's going we know we can answer all those questions is just what i want to make sure of okay and i echo i mean i understand because on almost 99% of the things that you hear and see, it will make sure and says, we do not sell your data. We don't collect it. We are, you know, we are 
you can trust what we do with the information. So I, I do think it behooves us to make sure that we are protecting not only the students, but the families and identities, locations, all kinds of stuff. Uh -huh. okay. So we can do, we can proceed with the Renaissance contract the way you would like to. Um, if you want us to, we can uh, pull it for tonight, table it, go back that's and find fine. out the I mean, and then bring them back to you. No, yeah. that's fine, Rick. I mean, Rick, I think we've, we've talked a lot and share similar feelings on online education and all that stuff. Um, if we could just maybe follow up in person, if you could just maybe click those links when you see them and check it out, see what it says. Okay. If that makes sense. Yes, it does. Because there, I mean, there's a necessity aspect that I totally get, um, but I also just want to make sure that we can answer questions and we know what's going on. Okay. Christy? I'm good. Robin said she's good earlier. Laura's good. Kara? Good. That was the last one. Okay, so we have pulled K, and then we have also pulled P through AT. Yes. So with those changes and the updates I mentioned earlier that already been corrected, minutes reflect that, entertain a motion to approve. So moved, Cliff. Second, Alan. Okay, call roll, please. Alan? Yes. Cliff? Yes. Gertis? Yes. McGill? Yes. Morris? Yes. Good job, team. That is literally the fastest we've gotten through a consent agenda <laughs> in our current group of board members. So I think maybe because it was so huge, everybody <laughs> was here. Make sure we got corrections done and things ahead of time. But I appreciate you guys. All right. Brings us to 22, proposed executive session to discuss A, the employment, hiring, appointment, promotion, demotion, disciplining, or resignation of individual salaried public officers and employees under the executive session authority, Oklahoma statute, Title 25-307-B1. The board will discuss those persons listed on Exhibit A. Okay, so I would entertain a motion to vote or not, or I'm sorry, a motion and vote to convene or not to convene into executive session. Can we discuss that first? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, we don't technically follow Robert's rules of orders. They get real particular, the British, about you have to make a motion before you can even discuss it, but that's oh. not law and we don't always follow that. So you're perfectly fine, just fire away. Well, if there's someone who need feels the need, we need to go into executive session. But Absolutely. I'll start by saying I don't have I don't have a question. Okay. I'm okay with no executive session. I don't have a need unless Rick feels there's a need. Mm -hmm. I, I do not have a specific need, but I also don't want, Kara's basically the last one. If she does, I don't want her to feel like, I can't say I have a need and look bad. We're all totally, we all 100% no. support. We can all change our mind. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, well, it sounds like people are generally in agreement. So someone just needs to make a motion. I move way. that we do not um, convene to executive session. I second, second. Gertis. Okay, Gertis, <laughs> Gertis, Gertis, second. I don't want to have to log in again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, call roll, please. Alan? Yes. Cliff? Yes. Gertis? Yes. McGill? Yes. Morris? Yes. Okay, item 24 is not needed. And that brings us to 25, motion and vote to approve or not approve the hiring of individuals listed on exhibit A. I would entertain a motion. So move, Cliff. Have a second. 
Second, Curtis. Thank you, Kara. Hey. All right. Call roll, please. Alan? Yes. Cliff? Yes. Curtis? Yes. McGill? Yes. Morris? Yes. All right. Item 26, motion and vote to approve or not approve transfer reassignment workday adjustments for the individuals listed on Exhibit A. So moved. Alan. Second, Cliff. Okay. And team, if you have any questions regarding the general stuff on here, you're more than more than capable or it's perfectly acceptable to ask those. We just not being exec can't ask any HR specific type question to an individual. So if you have any questions related to the general things here, feel free to go ahead and ask those. Everybody good? I'm looking for faces. Looks like it. Rochelle, please go ahead and call roll. Alan? Yes. Cliff? Yes. Gerdes? Yes. McGill? Yes. Morris? Yes. And was this for 27 because I cut out? That was for 26. That's 26. Okay. Okay. Now we're at item 27, motion to vote to approve or not approve the resignations of individuals listed on exhibit A. So moved. So moved. Second. It was who moved? Clift. Clift. No. Clift first, Robin Morse second. Okay. okay. Any question or discussion team? I'm looking for eyes, looking for heads. Okay, call roll please. Alan? Yes. Cliff? Yes. Gardis? Yes. McGill? Yes. Morris? Yes. All right, item 28, we did not have any listed with the agenda. I know on retirements, if there's anything that's been turned in after the agenda, we generally consider those and act on those. R Seth, Jennifer, Rick, we don't have any. Okay, nothing, nothing on 28 to act on. Item 29, new business. Rick, do we have anything? No, sir. Okay. All right. Item 30, Mr. Croslin, superintendent's report. Um, on July 23rd, we will have um, the Infant Crisis Center again at the high school from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. for a diaper and formula drop-off for any uh, parent of young children in our community. Uh, this is our third time to host this event. We've had a good turnout every time we've been able to host it. And so I'm excited that we're able to provide this to our community. Um, we are slightly altering our mill service program to high school students this next year um, due to some financial losses that we've been uh, having with us being um, having the high school in the CEP program, which is the community eligibility program. Um, we are going to discontinue that program, but we're still gonna be able to serve students at the high school uh, with them being able to complete um, the application for free and or reduced lunches there. We're um, wanting to make sure that every kid's need is met. We're not gonna let any kid go hungry, um, but with us having the CEP program at the high school, we are losing approximately $100,000 a year uh, just for that side alone, simply because we just do not have that many kids uh, eating at the high school. It's an open campus. Um, they choose to eat at the hospital, go home, go to the restaurants, those type of things. And um, so to provide this program is actually um, costing the district a, a significant amount of money. So for us to be able to still meet students' needs, we're just going to ask them to complete the free and reduced lunch form as part of the enrollment process. All information is confidential. And like I said, we are not going to let kids go hungry. That, that is not the intent here at all. Uh, we'll work with each and every single one. I do want to make an announcement that it is our goal to return to in-person board meetings next month. I originally had hoped that that could happen tonight, but uh, the boardroom is unfortunately not ready. We've been having it painted thanks to a very generous donations. Uh, we've been able to get that painted and um, it's going to have a little bit different of a look and feel, nothing drastic, but um, as was mentioned earlier about branding, we are all about branding in Chickasha. And so I encourage everyone to see the boardroom at the August 10th meeting and or stop by sometime. It's 
it's going to be nice to see RC up there and, and some other things that we have going on. I do just want to take a moment and thank everyone for their input, their feedback, their patience, their cooperation, their support, uh, especially um, since I've started back on March 23rd. Um, we have faced a lot of challenges. We've closed school, we've canceled prom, we've redone graduation. Um, we have not had a day of class since I've started. And with that comes a litany of challenges and things that we've had to work together to overcome. And I am very grateful to be a part of a community in the school district that believes in the value of education, believes in the value of taking care of kids and supporting them. And so I just wanna say thank you to everyone. Um, we still have obstacles to overcome. And as you saw the return to learn plan, it's not going to make everyone have a smile on their face, but the most important thing is, is that we work together for our kids and always keep them at the center, just thought of our process, our decision-making and always uh, what we want to be about. So thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for everything that we're gonna to continue to do. This is a fantastic district with a very bright future. So let's get school started on August 20th. Let's see what happens. And uh, it's going to be a great year. And with that, I submit my report. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Rick. As always, we appreciate you. And we appreciate our entire team. You guys are doing a great job and tough times, and you're getting it done. We got your back. Thank you. We are ready to swear in um, Rochelle right. and Kelly as our board clerk and um, minutes clerk, deputy clerk. And so I think what we need to do first is, is uh, Kelly to swear in Rochelle. Mm -hmm. Item six, okay. And then we will have them flip roles and Rochelle will then swear in Kelly. So ladies, we're gonna turn it over to you to take care of this part, please. And this will probably kick in the copyright thing again and kick everyone off. We apologize for that, but we legally have to take care of this. So Rochelle. I I'm going to ask Rochelle, correct? That's correct. And Rochelle, you get to raise your right hand and you have a Bible because I think you need to put your other hand on the Bible. Anyway, go ahead. Oh. Don't cross your fingers. I, Rochelle, I, Rochelle Bowens. I, Rochelle Bowens. Repeat after me. <laughs> Hereby declare under oath that I will faithfully perform. Hereby declare under oath that I will faithfully perform. The duties of board clerk. The duties of board clerk. Of Chickasha Public School District 001. Of Chickasha Public School District number 001. Brady County, Oklahoma. Brady County, Oklahoma. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Hold a minute, Kelly's frozen. Kelly, you are frozen. Whoa. Come back, Kelly. <laughs> I was cutting out again. Um, to the best of my ability and that I will faithfully discharge. To the best of my ability and, I, and that I will faithfully discharge. All duties pertaining to said office. All duties pertain to said office. And obey the Constitution and laws of the United States of Oklahoma and obey the Constitution and the laws of the United States and Oklahoma. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> okay, you ready, Kelly? Yep. I, Kelly Hare. I, Kelly Hare. Hereby declare under oath. Hereby declare under oath. That I will faithfully perform that I will faithfully perform the duties of minutes, deputy minutes clerk. Hold on, Kelly. Hold, hold on. Kelly, we lost. Uh, 
Yeah, we lost audio. We'll go back. Hey, uh, Kelly. Uh-huh. You might. Okay, you're back. Okay, you're back. Go ahead. We'll try it again. Okay. Of deputy minutes clerk. Yep. Deputy minutes clerk to the best of my ability. Of Chickasha School District number 1001. Of Chickasha Public Schools District 001. Of Grady County, Oklahoma. Of Grady County, Oklahoma. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. All the duties pertaining to said office. All the duties pertaining to said office. And obey the Constitution and laws of the United States and Oklahoma. And obey. And obey all the, the Constitution and laws of the United States of Oklahoma. <laughs> Woo! You gotta love technology, folks. Yeah, way we back. Do. I do have one question because it was really hectic. What time did we start our meeting? <laughs> Six oh three. That's what I wrote down. Six zero three. Okay. All right. So we got to work on that district number. It's I-001. I thought it was, but I thought, well, I don't know if I'm right or not. I was a little bit confused there, but here we go. You'll again. get it down. Yeah. You'll get it down. All right. Great job, everybody. Appreciate it. Um, awesome job. Yep. Everybody's done great. Look forward to seeing you next month with the normal. It'll be a regularly scheduled meeting as long as we don't have to change anything and Schedule a special one. To make it Where are your purple and gold? Everyone. All right. I need, all right. I don't have any gold. <laughs> well, get some. some. <laughs> I, I do want to make, I want to say that um, I have so appreciated being the board clerk for you guys and the patience of learning everything. You guys have been awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Kelly. You Thank you. I and still, you have been awesome to work with. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Great, great lady. <laughs> Christy, I see you. Thanks for being supportive. We are not all the way in there. We will be next month. We had too many things going on. So no worries. We're here when you need us. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate the support. I've I've seen you in and out. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right, 31, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. <laughs> second, Alan. Okay, Morse motion, second by Alan. Call roll, please. Alan? Yes. Clift? Yes. Gertis? Yes. McGill? Yes. Morris? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you. Good work. See you.